My wife and I have four sons. When one of our boys was about seven years old, he earned $5 one Saturday morning by raking leaves in our neighbor's yard. The following day, Sunday, we went to church as usual. After church, my wife took the other three boys home in our minivan while I took this particular son home in my car. On the way, I decided to stop by a Handy Mart store to pick up some milk or something I needed, and my son came into the store with me. And as soon as we got into the store, my son asked me if he could buy something with his $5. I said, sure, it's your money, you earned it, you can do with it whatever you want. And when we got to the cash register, I had the milk or whatever, and he had a pack of Skittles or some other candy for himself, but then he saw this display of little paper roses on the counter. He pulled out one of the roses and put it on the counter with his Skittles. And I noticed that the paper roses were $2.99 each. So I said, hey bud, why are you buying that rose? He said, I wanna give it to mom. Then I said, yeah, but that paper rose costs $2.99. That's more than half of the money you have. You won't have much left over. Now, why would I say something like that? Why would I discourage my young son from being extravagantly generous especially when he wanted to give his mom, my wife, a flower. His generous gesture was prompted by love. He loved his mom, and his love naturally created a generous heart. Isn't that the kind of heart I would want for my young son? Looking back, I think my comment was driven by fear. Fear that my son wouldn't have enough left over, which most likely came from my own fears about not having enough. I think this is one of the things that our materialistic culture tends to teach us, to fear that we don't have enough. And the truth is this fear often creates a reluctant heart when it comes to generosity. It creates a selfish or a stingy heart because fear kills generosity. Listen to what the Apostle Paul teaches in 2 Corinthians. He writes, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Notice here where Paul locates the source of generosity. The source of generosity is not in our wallets or in our bank account. The source of generosity is in our hearts. Notice also that Paul says we are not to give reluctantly or under compulsion, but rather from our hearts. I think he's saying that true generosity is not motivated by guilt or obligation, but by love. The Bible tells us this is the way God himself gives. In John 3, 16, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Paul finishes his thought in 2 Corinthians by saying, For God loves a cheerful giver. The word Paul uses here means joyous, and I think he's saying that generosity both comes from joy and produces joy. I think this is what Jesus was teaching us when he says in Luke chapter 6, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I think Jesus is saying that when we give, when we are generous, God not only uses our generosity to bless others, he also pours out his blessing on us and in us. I think Jesus means that when we are generous, God increases our joy. So today as an exercise, I'd like you to consider a question when you think about your own generosity. And here's the question. How's your heart? Does the thought of giving your money or your time cause you to feel fear or anxiety? Like I felt when I watched my young son commit more than half his net worth to give a flower to his mom. If so, just confess that fear and anxiety to the Lord. Ask Jesus to remind you of his own great generosity expressed in the gift of his love for you. For when we know his love, our hearts grow in joy, and the natural result of joy is generosity. Let me encourage you to either begin a regular practice of generosity in your life or to grow your practice of generosity, not out of guilt or obligation, but cheerfully and joyfully, trusting that God will use your gift to bless others and in turn will increase your joy. If you found this devotional helpful, just hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.